Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be giving you a charm guide and going over everything you need to know in order to get the most out of this set's mechanic. Okay, so starting off with the combat charms, when and why should you be taking them? Well, combat charms usually help you to win fights, which is beneficial if you're trying to save HP, uh, get money from winning the fight, also preserving streaks. The main reason you want to be taking combat charms in the early and mid game is to try and preserve your streak, uh, or just kill a couple of extra units, and then late game you pretty much always want them. Combat charms in the early game usually cost around 1-3 to three gold, so be careful of buying them if you don't think it's really going to change the outcome of the fight, as this is quite expensive and remember that Econ is worth more in the early game than it is later. When you're taking a combat charm, if you're on a loss streak, the only reason you should do so is if you think it's going to secure a few extra kills. And of course, if you think that it's going to preserve a win streak, then you should definitely be taking it. So make sure that you're always looking to scout and evaluate. Avoid taking combat charms in early stage 4 if you haven't already built up your board. For example, if you're playing a standard fast 8 and you do a 4-2 rolldown, you want to avoid buying those really expensive combat charms if you haven't already upgraded your 4 cost units. The reason is, is because the gold is a lot more valuable in your long term future being spent on units than it is on expensive combat charms. Of course there are some cheap options that you can definitely pick up if you're looking to roll down, but unless you're in an econ galaxy or have a lot of money to spare, then prioritize units, then charms. Starting in stage 5, combat charms get very powerful, but they do cost a decent amount of gold. The upside to combat charms in stage 5 is that they appear more frequently, meaning that if you buy one every round, you only have to roll once to see your first one each turn. And most of them are pretty acceptable. Even if it's not a perfect combat charm, it's usually beneficial to just make sure that you have at least something in order to preserve HP in stage 5, as every single uh, placement counts, and you need to make sure that you're maximizing uh, your HP preservation. Some of the really powerful ones include Earthquake, Animate Bench, Spawn Swarm, Big Surprise, Treasure Party, and of course, Summon Dragon. The only time that you don't want to be taking these really expensive ones is if you're about to go to level 9, and there's no need to roll down for a combat charm if you think that you're about to spike later. However, that being said, most of the time it is beneficial to just roll at least once in order to make sure that you have a combat charm every single round on stage 5. In the earlier game of stage 2, some of the very powerful combat charms that will help you preserve your streak include Shivanate, Starless Shield, and Hugeify. In stage 3, you can also get Moonlight Ritual, which is very good especially if you already have upgrades, Phantom Gloves, and Summon Voidling. Moving on to the next section, which is charms for reroll comps. Charms are very, very powerful in reroll comps because you can roll more frequently as you're already rolling for your upgrades anyway, and it enables you to get more charms than the rest of the lobby. A lot of the times with reroll comps, you want to slow roll above 50 gold to make sure you're preserving HP, but a lot of the times when it comes to charms, you actually want to dig a little deeper, go below 50 gold if it means that you can guarantee a charm every single turn. This is because there are so many incredible econ uh, charms that you should be buying every single round if you're playing reroll. For example, coin flip uh, is just free money as well as some of the other options as sinister deal, golden dummy, assembly, lucky find, and of course if you're rolling for 2 or 3 costs you can take all 2s or all 3s, as well as magic mirror to give you more copies of the units that you're looking to play. Just remember when you're playing reroll, you don't always have to secure an econ charm. Sometimes if you get a combat charm and it, you think it'll help preserve your streak, then by all means take it. But most of the time before you hit your three stars and you're looking to start to win rounds, you want to make sure that you're picking up these econ options as it'll accelerate the rate that you get your three stars. Here are some tips for min-maxing charms. With Minor Polymorph, if you get this on 2-1 and you don't really have any direction, if you happen to have a random upgrade of 1 cost, you can sell the rest of your 1 cost and guarantee that the Polymorph will act on one specific unit. This is really good to give you direction and a more powerful stage 2 board. This can be done with Polymorph and Major Polymorph, although I wouldn't recommend selling all of your units and it's usually more of a tip that's done in the early game. Copycat, which only costs 1 gold but can secure a 1 star, is very beneficial if you think that you can kill a 2 cost or a 3 cost. Make sure that you're actively scouting around so that you can uh, make sure that you're getting the most out of this charm. That being said, you don't always have to go for the higher cost units. If you're playing around Blitzcrank pair and you see someone's leaving a 1 star Blitzcrank alone on the side, make sure you're sniping that in order to get upgrades. Bunch of belts is really good for your frontline, however, sometimes the belts will go onto your backline units, so you just want to make sure that you're temporarily benching them before you buy this charm, and it'll secure all of the belts on towards the frontline. Golden Dummy can potentially get you more gold if you have extra units that can heal it, uh, but usually just make sure that this Golden Dummy is placed towards the frontline, as the worst thing you can do is not let it take any damage. Surprise can be maximized if you have a remover to target the unit that you want to have more items. 
This is because Surprise will give a trench coat to units that don't have any items, but you can just remove that or remove other items and then put those items onto the trench coat holder. This is because when trench coat splits into three units, it can hold on to extra items and those will appear as well. This is notably really good with Protector's Vow as it'll enable more units to cast. And of course this does work with Big Surprise as well. Leadership can give your main tank an extra 300 HP if your main carry doesn't already have three items as well. If not, you can sometimes use a magnetic remover in order to get the most out of this. Just note that TGs will also count as three, so make sure that you don't have any other TGs as they might steal the HP as well. Back row star priority is only on the fourth row. This means that you can move all of your secondary carriers to the third row just to guarantee that it goes on towards your main carry. Don't do this if it griefs any of them that are actually supporting units with items, but if you're just playing around a bunch of support trait bots, then of course you can feel free to move them to the third row. Animate Bench is a really powerful combat charm as it just gives you more frontline. However, if you don't have enough gold to buy a bunch of units to put onto your bench, you can actually buy and sell units after they've been thrown in. The only annoying thing is that they will be invisible. However, if you just spam your sell button, which is default bound to E, then you can sell them and buy out the rest of your shop. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy learning about charms, this set's set mechanic. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.